Okay, hello, Mr. Hari. Hello, Mr. Hello, sorry for being late. I had a small problem. Thanks God, I fixed it. Okay, uh, no back to... Thank you. Uh, back to exercise 21. Yesterday we started a little, but now I realized we have a mistake. Can you find it? Uh, I don't know. We made a huge mistake yesterday. Is it, is, is it to do with sign and concern? No, in the figure concerning the angles. As you can see, it's clear. 30, 60, 90, we are fine, right? Yeah. But here, 45 plus 45. No, it's 90. No, we are fine. Let's go. Yeah, we're fine. Tell you, never mind. Okay, uh, now I looked if we use the cosine law, you know the cosine law is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Please tell me you took it. What, what, mister? The cosine, cosine law, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah. This is actually cosine only. The cosine law is AP plus, you know that, don't worry. Okay, so uh, I want to solve it using cosine. That's the answers must be the same. So if I want to use the cosine, first of all, we need to find the ratio of the ascending and descending paths. So from A, from C to A, and then descending from A to B. So of course, what I'm going to find is AC. Over AB. What I'm planning to do is if I use the cosine, of course, I'm going to get equations in terms of for example, ACAI, ABAI. Or if I want to use the sign, then I'm going to use this angle because this angle is opposite AI. This angle 30 adjacent is AI over the hypotenuse, which is CA. So, for example, if I started with the cosine law, we will use the above angles. Cosine. 30 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So AI mm -hmm. over the hypotenuse, which is AC. AC. Right? Hypotenuse is every side facing the 90 degrees. So the hypotenuse of the big side. Uh, here, this triangle is the big size or the side facing the 90 degree. So AC. But whenever you are dealing with cosine or sine trigonometry in general, if you don't, if you didn't memorize the important angles, I'm going to give you a hint how to find them using a calculator. So for example, cosine 30 is 0 0.866025 etc there's all of the digits here yes okay so whenever you find 0 0.866 directly three over three so for example radical three no not over three over two yeah so the same so directly put it before you forget it I use the normal calculator and show me that square root of 3 over 2 so, oh okay so uh, if you have this it's fine but usually for me I don't calculate it that's the old way
Okay, I only wrote down the things I want. So keep it now. Don't find algorithm or anything or plan before you get all the given. So if we did that in this triangle, we're going to do the same, right? Yeah. Okay, so in the other triangle, ABI, what we're going to say? Uh, ABI, we're going to say, um, uh, should we use cosine again? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to use the same cosine. Let's yeah, so cosine is 45. Okay, which one? Uh, the 45 up or down? 45 up. Okay, so it's equal to what? Uh, equal to Jason. Which one? Which, which one? is uh, AI again. Okay. So, and B A or A B. Okay, great. So cosine forty five is equal to how much? We can use the calculator. Yeah. And directly type the cosine forty five. It is the square root of two over two. Yes, right. Radical two over two is equal to AI over AB. Okay, now we have two equations. Right? So, yeah. In both equations, we have something common. And important to get rid of. Which is something A I. Yes. So now simply join them. For me, the best way I love making my equations equals to only A I. So two terms of. I prefer doing it like this, not to divide the equations, and then I'm going to deal with two fractions divided by each other. I'm going to find, etc. So extra work. No, I prefer to keep, for example, AI, find all the equations in terms of AI. So simply cross product on both. Okay? Let's do it and you will get my point. AI will be equal. Let's lift the AC up. So AI will be equal to AC radical of three. I prefer writing the AC before the radical. Do not get confused. Is it inside or outside the radical? Over two. The same thing for the other one. AI is equal to AB up beside radical. Simply AB radical two over. Okay, now what I meant by this, we know that AI, of course, it's equal to AI, right? Yeah. And we have two unknowns, so these two unknowns must be equal, of course. So simply you can solve it from here. AC radical of three is equal to AB. Square root of two. Square root of two. I got rid of the two directly. Because I don't want to this time. Yes. So we skipped one step. We made it in our head. We multiplied both sides with two to get rid of the over two. And now simply.
AC over AB is equal. Let me write it. Because if someone is watching the record session, of course, you will understand. Yeah. AC over AB, surely it's equal to, it's with them, radical 3 down. So radical 2. over radical three. So is it in our choices? Yes, it is. Uh, wait, yeah, it's not. Where? It's not in our choices. So what we're going to do here is the approximation. First of all, I want you to rationalize. No one loves to see the radical down. There is no radical in that denominator, always get rid of it. So in order to rationalize a square root number, we're going to multiply with the same square root number. Yes. So you will obtain radical 3 power 2, which is we will get rid of power 2 and the radical to keep the 3 alone. So directly it's equal to radical 2 times radical 3. No need for simplifying what? that. It's probably one. No, one. Oh, I'm multiplying it. Okay. Over radical three times radical three is three. So, okay. till now we didn't get anything like the answer. So, I'm going to do the following. I'm going directly to estimate. Okay, calculate a radical 2 times radical 3 over 3 is equal to radical 6 over yeah, 3. Over, over 3. Yeah. Which is 0 0.816. So my choice must be near this number, right? Yes. Simply, I'm going to do the following. Let's check them. One, it's far. No, it's not really far, but maybe we're going to. One over two, zero point five. No, one is better. So directly, I'm going to take it off. One over three, which is zero point three three. It's a lot far. The closest one now is I have. D. D radical 2 over 2. Yeah, it's the closest one. I've tried it. Let me check. It is 0 0.7. Okay, it's 0 0.7. And the other one is 0. E is radical 3 divided by, by 0 0.5. Yeah. Okay, so this one is Close better. One. Okay. But the problem, they chose this one. So I'm going to find the inverse of that. So I'm talking about AB over AC. Maybe we're going to get exactly, exactly the same answer, OK? OK. In this order, if AB over AC, simply just switch them. Radical 3 over radical 2. And to get rid of the radical down, I'm going to multiply by radical 2. Of course, it's radical 6 over 2. So if I want to try it, no, not like this, close the parentheses. I have 1.2, which is a way far than these options. Yep. So to be honest with you, I don't know why this happened, but as you can see, all our work, we worked fine, and I can't see any mistake done here, this Maybe order.
maybe yes. some shit. Of course, it can be. It can be a difference in the angles between the real exam and the sheets here. I don't know, but of course there's an error because the choices are not exactly the same. Okay. Okay. The hard questions. We are going back to the easy question that we solved before, just to practice on how to solve them quickly. Because on Friday you're going to have the exam, so for me, I don't want exactly the all the right answers. I want you to take for sure. So I know this one is for sure. This is the way how to think about directly circle it. Move on, move on, and then if you have more time, you can go back. Okay. Okay. Now, as you can see, the numbers A, B, and C satisfy A plus B plus C equals to zero. And A, B, C equal to 78. What is the value of A plus B? multiplied by B plus C, multiplied by C plus A. It's easy one, but maybe you need time to figure it out. More ABCs, it's fine. Mm -hmm. How is it even possible to be that? Maybe they're a negative of course number. It's, possible. it's easy one. So they have a negative number? Of course. You are dealing with all of them are positive. Good start. When we have A times B times C positive number. So of course, three of them are positive or one of them is negative to obey this, to make it right, this one, this equation. So two of them will be negative because there is no negative in the product, okay? Okay. So good. So you are thinking that two of them are equal to one number. Two of them in the negative, one in the positive to get the zero, which is 100% good idea. But I don't want you to go deep in it. So if you are supposing, for example, uh, fixing B to be the positive number and A and C are the negative, it's example. So maybe it's A is a negative number. Well, if B is positive, B of course should be equal to negative A plus C. I just took the A's to the other side and took the negative common. So of course, you are right with your idea. So here simply you are saying that AC multiplied with negative A is equal to 78. So you can find A in terms of C and C in terms of A. But look at this. If you did the following, you will have one unknown. <coughs> Sorry, uh, you will have one unknown, but you, in fact, all the choices are real numbers. So you need something more important for this practical, something practical. Okay. When you are dealing with algebra, look at the answer. <laughs> uh, the final answer. So A plus B multiplied by B plus C multiplied by C plus A.
Okay, can you relate them? Can you combine this up to this down? Uh, Look, here you are dealing with three numbers multiplied with each other, right? Yeah. So you need to find a plus B, you need to find B plus C, you need to find C plus A. To get the. You can do that from your equation, right? Of course, not this one because this one is multiplication, so you are not finding the value. You can find it from here. A plus B is equal to how much? Uh, it doesn't say it. I don't think it's zero. Yes, but if you subtract it C from, from both sides, you will get A plus B equal to negative C. Right? Yeah. Is it better to simply put the negative c here instead of a plus b so simply just put the negative c the other one b plus c is equal to what b plus c is equal to uh, a minus a yes a. negative a Course. That's going to be negative B. Negative B. Continue. If we want to multiply them, minus and minus and minus, it will be. It will be uh, minus. Yes, so negative. Let's put them in the same order A, B, C. Negative A, B, C. Okay, but a, a, let me put them in the parentheses. A, a B, C alone is equal to how much? 78. Okay, and the minus. Uh, 78? Yes, negative 78. So, E is the correct answer? Of course, because we don't have negative 78, and we still that got the idea yes okay great so if you want to continue this one i don't like this one will take time this one okay this one's going to change basically so Okay, this one would take time, yes. So let us try this one. Each of the numbers A and B is the square of an integer. The difference A minus B is a prime number. Nice. Which of the following could be B? So simply we are going to try. Nice. Square of an integer. Square of an integer. So uh, any integer, for example, uh, two, two to the square of an integer, which is four. So we are talking about an integer number and the square of it. So a is four, for example, because it's the square of an integer. Okay. Got the idea? Yeah. Also, I will add it, for example, three. What do you mean by integer? Integer is like the whole number. Oh, okay. One, two, okay. three, four, etc. These are the integers. For example, we have negative integers also. Negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. Okay. Okay. But the zero 
I would not tell you the zero is a is an integer or not because there is a different syllabus. So, for example, uh, Russia don't believe that zero is a number. Uh, the America no, America believe that zero is a number. So, it's a debate. I don't want to make you go deep in it. Okay. So let's erase these. And tell me what you're going to try. The question is, which of the following could be B? And we know that A minus B is a prime number. And A and B is the square of an integer. Usually, I'll give you a small trick. Whenever you are dealing with A and B square of an integer, find another one. So A is equal to C power 2, for example, C and D. C power 2 minus D power 2 is equal to a prime number. Mm -hmm. Right? I did nothing. I just find another <laughs> one. Yeah. So I know that A is a square of an integer. A C power 2, sorry. And B is equal to D power 2. I need to find this. First of all, if you make a square root for 100, it stands, so I'm fine. It can be, B can be equal to 100, 144, 12. Uh, 256 also, 930, one, 10,000, which is 100. So all the choices are fine. We can add from it, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so we need to search for another way. Let me test before the 256. Radical of 256 is equal to 16. So, yes, all of them are a square of an integer. So, I'm not going to take off anyone among them. From the given, I only replaced well, 2 minus d power 2 to find something I know. For example, now I got an idea. Let's play with this term. Okay. What can you do with that? C power 2 minus D power 2. It's equal to how much? Yes, we can try these examples. Uh, I mean, options. Yes, but if you tried them for d, for example, d power two for uh, this one, you don't know the a exactly. It's what. So, if it's equal to a prime number, of course, all of them we will find something to make it equal to prime number. And their question. They want us to find a prime number in all cases. So when, whatever A is equal, find me it's a prime number. So for me, when I look at C power 2 minus D power 2, I remember the remarkable identities. In other words, to factorize this, I'm going to get what? x power 2 minus y power 2 is equal to x minus y. You forgot them from grade 7. x minus what, what? c minus d into x minus y. C plus D. Mm 
to factorize c power 2 minus d power 2 is equal, we know that c minus d into c plus d. If you expand the, these two terms, you will get c power 2 minus d power 2. Right? Yeah. Now you remember that. Mm -hmm. And just remember, the result must be a prime number. So now, in fact, I'm away from the question because they want me to find B. And I know that B is equal to D power 2. Right, but now I don't have the, the d power 2. So I will do the following in order to find to make it something near it. First of all, I'm going to change the question. So they want which value to be b. I'm going to find which one is suitable to be d by simply square rooting each one. So 100 square root of 100 is 10. 144, it's 12. 256, we calculated that now, it's 16. The square root of 900, the square root for 9, which is 3, and two zeros will be 1, 0, 30. 30, 30 equals 900. And for the 10,000, four zeros, I'm going to take two zeros. Then, these are the square root of each number. So if one of them is okay for being B, of course the square root is okay for being D. And to get, in order to get a prime number from multiplying two terms, of course, there's a value for C, there's a value for D. If I replace D, for example, here, this uh, D, for example, 10 or 112 or 30, I will get a prime number. So, first of all, let's apply the conditions. Is it okay to get zero? zero? Is it the prime number? No. Okay, so of course D will never be equal to C, right? Yes. So now I know that C will never be equal to D. And usually when we study the prime numbers, we study the positive integers. So C will be greater than D. Because if C is smaller than D, then we will get here a minus, which is a negative prime number. So I'm going to avoid that. But I have two numbers. Can they be prime number x, y? Just remember, the prime number can be divisible with one or itself only. So if I have the prime number equal the composition of two prime numbers, so one of them should be equal to one or, yes, for sure one of them will be equal to one because I can't divided. Let me make it clear. If C minus D is equal to 2 and C plus D is equal to 3, 2 times 3, of course, is not a prime number because I can divide with 2, I can divide with 3. I must have one of these two terms to be equal to 1. But of course, I need C to be greater than D. So, of course, I'm not going to choose one of these that numbers, for example, 10 and give C value of negative uh, 9. So 
I'm going to look at the first one. If D is equal to 10, C must be equal to 11. So directly you can apply it. 11 minus 10 is equal to 1. 11 plus 10 is equal to 21. Is it a prime number? I'm choosing the first one. 21, is it the prime number or not? No, it's not. <laughs> so I'm going to take it off. I know it's a bit hard for you, but let me just repeat what we did uh, c power 2 minus d power 2 because i c power 2 because i know it's a square of an integer so of course c power 2 minus d power 2 the remarkable identities we know that it's equal to c minus d into c plus d so now using this we can simply just know that C minus D multiplied with C plus D should be a prime number. Obviously, it's a prime number. They are, they are asking us to find a prime number in this condition. But if they, these two numbers are randomly any two numbers, so of course it can be a prime number because any two positive numbers are so, for example, x, y, I can divide with x or I can divide with y. So how can it be a prime number? In only one condition, the prime number can be divided only by one or itself. So, c minus d, the best one, I'm going to suppose c minus d equals to one. Fix it here, c minus d equals to one. So c is bigger than D with one unit. So we found here the square root of each choice. For example, if 10 is my choice, I'm going to try. C must be equal to 11. 11 minus 10 is equal to one. And then put them in the other one. So 11 plus 10 equals to 21 multiplied with one is 21. Is it a prime number? No, I can divide it with Seven. So we took it off, and here the same. We will remove it. Now let's try the other one. You will try it for me. It's twelve. C is equal to how much? I'm sorry, you didn't get the idea. Okay, I think you have problem in connection. Uh, let me continue it here. So 12. If D is equal to 12, C must be equal to 13. So 13 plus 12 is 25. 25, is it a prime number? Of course not, we can divide it by five. It's five power two. So I'm going to remove it and take off this choice now 16 so mr can you hear me this, yes oh okay so 17 and these yes 17 plus 16 33 okay so 33 it's it's not a prime number because I can divide the with 11 or three. three. So yeah. simply remove this choice. Now I still have two choices, which is great. 900. 13. So 30, sorry. I'm going to try the square root. So 31 yeah. times 30. Why Mr. Times? Uh, plus, sorry. Uh, yeah. 
So it's equal to 61. 61. Is it a prime number or not? I think it is a prime number. Right? Let us skip it now because usually I ask my students to try all the prime numbers below it. So below half of it. So I'm talking about 30, 31. So we are going to divide it with all the prime numbers of the 31. It will take time. Let me do the last one. And if it's prime number, so we will try them. If not, then simply we're going to choose D. OK? OK. Now, 100. Well, C is equal to D plus 1, so 101 plus 100. 201. Is it a prime? Um, uh, I yeah, no, it's it's not a prime. It can be divisible by. You don't three. know. You forgot that. Uh, no, 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 no. It's divisible yes, by three. Yes, of course. Yeah, I of course. So we can take it, and then so these are left. we are left only with D. And if you want to try the sixty-one, simply put on the calculator. Uh, I need half of it, so 61 divided by 2 is uh, 30.5. So I'm going to try all the prime number 30 if they can divide 61. Starting with 2, of course not. So uh, going to 3, I'm not going to try it because 7 is not divisible by 3. Uh, we have 5. Also, we know that it's not. not the same. We have seven. No, we have we memorized our table for multiplication, and we know it's not seven. Eleven. No, we can't divide it by eleven because six times eleven is sixty-six. Five times eleven is fifty-five. Smaller than it. Thirteen. Okay. rules for this we will try it no we couldn't now 17 also not 19 is a prime number also not uh 21 22 23 is a prime number Mr. Until how much? Until 33, you said? Until 30. Yeah. So 24 is not. 25 is not. 26 is not. 27 is not. 28 and the last one, 29. 29 is a prime number. So 61 divided by 21. If it's divisible by 29, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> okay, it's not. So yeah, so simply it's a prime number. We double check that. OK. I'm going to because I'm pretty sure that it's not clear for you. You are in grade nine. Usually in university you yeah. get real deep in algebra, so you will find the solution easily here. So I'm going to repeat it. The thing I did here. First of all, we read the question. A and B is a square root, a square of an integer. So simply, A is equal to another unknown power 2. We know that. We said that A is equal to C power 2. And B is equal to D power 2. Okay, Mishari, I'll be honest with you. I didn't plan for this exercise. I'm not prepared for it, but I did that without planning, only just to translate the given. So my given is square of an integer. I know it's equal to something power two. I wrote it down and then I figured that when I started writing the conditions, I found I have a small idea and we got the right answer using this idea. OK, so simply square 
of an integer, we wrote it down as a square of an integer. The difference a minus b is a prime number. But we know that a minus b is equal to c power 2 minus d power 2. So c power 2 minus d power 2 is a prime number. So till now, I'm only writing the given. Now the real work starts. So I know that c power 2 minus d power 2 is equal to c minus d into c. Factorize this term. You must remember that. If you remember, we gave you that with a plus b power 2, it's equal to a power 2 plus 2ab plus b power 2. When we said if we replaced my plus with minus, it's equal to a power 2 minus 2ab plus b power 2. And c power 2 minus d power 2. Next year, we will start with power 3. So remember power 2, so we can explain power 3 for you better. OK. Now. OK. I have the D into C plus D is a prime number. Now we looked. Prime number should never be divisible with any other number except one and itself. If C minus D and C plus D are one of them is not equal uh, to one for sure, then we can't get a prime number because simply I'm going to divide the number with a, with a random number and I'm going to get uh, uh, an integer which is not true. So it must be equal to one. If C plus D is equal to one, then D, we know it, it's a positive integer, so C must be equal to negative integer. Which is not right, because if C is negative, negative minus negative, so I'm going to work with the negative numbers to get a negative prime number. There's something called that. All the prime numbers start above one, so I'm not fine with that. So we suppose that the first term is equal to one. And if I want to make it real, I'm going to use each one. I'm going to test them directly here. So first of all, we calculated D. D, simply the square root on both sides. D is equal to the square root of B. So the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 144 is 12, etc. I'm going directly to put them in the equation. No need for this because any number multiplied with one is the same number, so I'm going to focus on C plus D. So if D is equal to 10, C is equal to 11, more than this, uh, my, than B with one. So 21, is it a prime? No, we know it, it's divisible with three or seven, so remove it. 12. We try 13, C is equal to 13. Now 25 also by 5. 16 plus 7 plus 17, sorry. 33, it's divisible by 3. 900, we got 61. We tested the 61, we found it's a prime. Or we can simply try this one, the final one. And then we are going to get uh, a prime number, uh, not a prime number, 201, which is, we know it's divisible by 3. So, but this one is one that you can solve directly. Uh, this one in the 4 times 4 table, some cells must be painted black. So simply I'm going to switch to black to obey the rules. The numbers next, to and below the table show how many cells in that row or column must be black. In how many ways can this table be painted? Okay, so simply two stands for two uh, black two black uh, cells. So of course we have a lot of ways. So 
let us look at zero. First of all, zero, there is no black cells here and no black cells here. So I'm going to play with the black cells on. Or one, two. We are going to count. Start it with this one to be black. I need this or this. Let me stick on the same choice. In order to complete the same thing they asked me about, one. And the row should stay one in the row. So I'm going to take it off and then continue on the other one. And of course, this one is off. I got two, and I got two cells. So of course, these two cells will be black. This one got that enough. we can take it off and this one didn't get enough yet so i'm going to give it the black one direct okay so as you can see this is a way we will continue on the same just to guess the right answer i found here a way let me denote it by dots so when we erase it, we will have a sketch of it. Now I fixed, for example, that one to be black always. So let me stick on it. And we chose this one to be black in the first way. Now we are going to choose this one. So simply change your color and take off what you don't want to flop. For example, two, I got two, so these two will stay empty. Zero, of course, empty, and zero, of course, empty. Mr. No. Yes. You can put this in the uh, up of two. Up of two. I can put what? You can How? draw black. Basically. How? In the up of uh, number two down. Right? This no, one, down, right? down. No, no, down, down. This? Yeah. Far down. Okay, but uh, first of all, I want to take up all the oh, conditions. Yeah. No, so to make work. it right, there is no, one. In the middle here. one, in the middle one, mister. Yes, but as you can see, it's obvious that for sure these two will be black. Yes, yes, yes. These two will be black. And, uh, but there's uh, no other. This one uh, got and enough. The, the one to the right as well. Yeah, this one. This yeah. one. Have so this question this is the way. Yes, you are all going only to count them. Okay, the tricky part is. They are sure that others will forget choices, so they added this question. OK, now I want to play with this. I'm going to stick on it because I don't want to lose any way. So the first one, these two. The second one, this one, and the above. The third one, I'm going to keep it yeah. empty, and I'm going to paint these two. Mr. They're not going to bring this question, are they? Yes. It's 2022 right now. Okay, maybe, but uh, if it's yeah, 22, 22, so you will have a lot of numbers. A lot hey, of Mr. Rates. Change the number to 22, then we'll do it again. It will be a lot. We, we are going to have uh, more than uh, these choices. Now we have five or more than five, the maximum. We are going to get more if we did. 
Yeah. What? So simply just take the conditions out, and of course this one will remain empty. And now, this is the trickiest one. The one can be here or here, for example. Okay. The two can be the, we have one missing, it can be here or here. The two also, this one will be here or here. Let us try them and fix them, fix this choice, because in these two choice, we didn't choose any one as we want. We were forced to choose a specific one, but now we have to choose. So, for example, which one do you want to choose? You can Mr. Uh, choose the, the middle. Yeah, down the, middle, down middle. Yeah, the right one. This one? No, up right. Okay, yes. so you want to choose this one. Yes, and the top uh, little bit left. If we choose this one, we are going to take off this. I'm not going yeah. to change the color because I want to go back to test more ways. Yeah, top so, left then. now. For this two, how many do you have? Two. So it's going to be top, then down. This far one, top, and this down. one, and this one will be empty, empty. Yeah, the last one, yeah. Easy. So we are fine. But remember, we did a choice. Back to where we chose. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Now it's uh, five, right? Till now we found three. Let's. Delete this okay. and remember you chose you chose this one, so the others were forced. So now I'm going to take this choice. Choose a different one. Mr. Bottom right. Bottom right, this one. Yes. So if you choose this one, these two. Will yeah, and, and just this one will be filled. And, uh, and this one will be filled. Yeah, that's another way. Yes, it's another way. So let's draw it. Till now we got four. So simply I can take these three choices and I will stick on five or more than five. Now let's go back to where we started choosing. When you chose this one, you were forced to put the others, right? Now let's choose under one. So you started with this, you started with this, and now we're going to choose under one. Mister. Yes. Why not change the position of the left ones? No, uh, we, we found that position. here we have three choices for two. So once we started with this, this, and this with the one below and the one up, and then we started here. For the beginning, we found that there's no choice. We are forced to put them in this order. But when we put them in this order, we started choosing to continue, okay? So, okay. Uh, if you started uh, from the from here or from here, you're going to face the same issue. So, in order to solve that, you are going only to try. Uh, I'm going to stick on your order. So, when you started yeah. here and here, I'm going to start here, for example. So, when I will start here. I'm going here to keep it empty. Yeah, you can choose one of the two. Uh, yeah, I can one choose of one two. of these. So if I choose, for example, this one. Then you have to choose the top right one. I'm going to choose the top right one. So did we do this before this new way? Uh, I don't remember that because if you can compare here, we have two dots, two dots, and here two dots, so no. 
two dots up, one down, one up. So we didn't choose this one. I have a choice. The way number five, it's different. Now, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going back to where we find the third choice in our choice. Okay, so you chose this one after choosing this one. You can one, choose right? the right one. No, let's begin with the same order. So yeah. if I don't want to circle to shade this, I'm going to cross it. Yeah, choose the right one, then top left. Choose this one. Top left. Yeah, and the uh, bottom, you mean this bottom one. right. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Okay, so this one, look at this. Is, oh, yes, yeah, the same. So the there same. are five ways. That's why I asked you to write them down. Okay, till now we have five ways. It's not done yet it, uh, by uh, trying them all. Because we tried only these four choices. We, are, we still have the up. So if I choose this one, I'm going to choose one of these. So of course, let us search. OK, one time we, we got this one. And one time when we choose the top one on the top, also this one. And one of the Also, so I'm not going to make it because we have something like it. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to choose this. If I choose this one here, I have one, so I'm going to cross them out. And here my choice will be for sure. And here, so one, two, empty, one, two, one. I did that before. Yes, it's here. So we found, yes, one, two, three, four, five drawings. So my answer will be five. Because of the lack of the time, maybe on Friday you will choose randomly between these. At least, at least for me, you will have percentage of 50% to make the right answer, to circuit the uh, right answer, okay? So I wish you good luck and I wish you all And please, if you have any question, please inbox me. I will try to help you. Good luck all. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Have a nice day. Welcome. Thank you. This was very helpful. See you, inshallah, next year. Bye.